Hello everybody and welcome back to Between Two Fans. These are your fans, Steve P and Mr. Dan Scholes. Back for another episode um, of the podcast that you guys spent all your uh, weeks waiting to drop. Um, first of all, Mr. Dan Scholes, uh, a week ago you were pretty sore after your first marathon. Have you recovered? Are you are you back on the not horse? Not back on the horse, Stevie. Um, definitely not. <laughs> yet, to, yet to find... Um, the running shoes yet, but man was back on the cricket field this weekend. We didn't play at all. Yeah, last I'm man stand. So. so feeling diff- completely different muscle groups. And I always find with cricket that you know it's muscle groups that you that one hasn't um, used in years. But so yeah, I've been I've been back mm. on the back on the sports field, playing some tag rugby, playing some fives footy, playing some last man stand. So. I'm active, just not on not on the running track yet. Uh, the, the those shoes are are well off, um, but the body the body's slowly getting back to back to its best. So after this weekend, I'm hearing rumors that you put your put your name down for the SA20 auction in in September. Listen, hey? bro, if anyone um, yeah, trying to get that sunrise, if anyone in Southwest London um, on the selectors board was there on Sunday, <laughs> they would have seen a couple tiles broken on a on a on the roof. Um, after after clearing the rope um it was a bit unfortunate that that i hope that's when they left because the next ball was when i was caught on the boundary um but it was good to good to don the whites again that's baseball dude it's about about being aggressive you know it's it's not it's about it's about not not backing down so that 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 probably would have elevated your chances we we mentioned ipl players a good score is like 20 or six i think i got um 26 of like 15 you know progress baseball let's go Right, yeah. No, I, I back you. So the county contract coming in, you know, the hundred, you know, the what's I think is a Scottish is a Scottish uh, Super Ten coming up. There's it's been too much cricket there. Come on, Scott, yeah, Scott I'm you getting, gotta get over there. Getting it. Right. Well, uh, we'll get straight into the predictions here, and uh, things aren't aren't looking very good for Steve, who after taking a roaring lead has uh, decided to be a bit uh, bolder with his predictions, and it has backfired in the last few weeks. So we're going to go into the predictions. Basically, what happens is we predict three every single week. And uh, Dan, would you like to take us through what happened last week and uh, what the updated scoreboard is currently looking at? I would love to, Stevie. So, um, yeah, our three matches were United versus Arsenal, um, Liverpool versus Aston Villa, and then Bulls versus Glasgow. Um, Stevie, the score was 8-5, I believe, after last game week. And that was after it was 8-2. So it's been three on the bounce for me. And going into this this weekend, as you can tell from my chipper voice, you might anticipate how this one's going. But let's start off with the United-Arsenal um, game. Stevie, your prediction was a bold 3-1 United. Um, the, um, the final result being... Um, one nil to Arsenal. My prediction was two nil Arsenal. So, by virtue of picking the right um, results, I get that done there. Next one um, in Aston Villa versus Liverpool. Um, Steve, your prediction was two nil Liverpool. Mine was two one Liverpool. Result three three. Bit of a rogue one. Um, to be fair, I think that almost played out in the. 2-1, no, it was close to 3-1. Um, then Liverpool kind of giving up a lead in the mm. 80th, 90th, um, in the between the 80 and 90th minute there. Um, so, again, by virtue of being closer, I take a 2-0 unassailable lead and going on to Bulls Glasgow, I mean, your prediction should have been right. They were up by 20 with mm. like 10 to play and then they just let Glasgow score three tries um, out of nowhere. Bulls getting it down in the end um 40 points to 34 stevie your prediction well we both um landed on 10 yeah we both believe, by 10. um and then mm. you um were happy enough to bump yours up to 12 um mine was mine remained at 10 so the bulls win by six um it's close for me so clean sweep and to love you taste of victory eight six the comeback is not just on it is a absolute slide now at the moment. I mean, you still got a two point lead, so I, I'm. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. not I'm not panicking. Yeah, I'm not we, panicking. We, we, still plenty, 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 plenty of time. Plenty of time to yeah. to get to. Trust me, I've been there. And you start second guessing, and you you think you know it, and now so so just just make sure that um you try to stop the slide because I'm I'm feeling 
razor sharp with my predictions at the moment. Um, nice. But nice. let's get into this last weekend's rugby fix, Stevie. Okay, good. So, because I've been holding yeah. in my my rant yeah. about the sharks for for, okay. for a while so, now. Uh, let, let let's set the scene here. Lions have been needing <laughs> need need a couple other results to go their way, right? Sharks hosting yeah. a Benetton, yeah. fresh off a, of travelling, having just played a um, as Sharks have to be fair a Challenge Cup semi final, and tell us what mm-hmm. happened next, Stevie. Well, we spoke about when we did the, the 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 last week, and we said, and, and we we're talking about the fact that sharks might rotate. They didn't rotate, and I said that I thought I thought they might not rotate, given that they didn't play at their best against Clermont, and they don't have, they got limited time to get ready for the Challenge Cup final, which is not this weekend, but the following weekend. Um, and what do these useless waste of space players for a waste of space franchise in a waste of space city in a waste of space province oh. decide to do? <laughs> They concede a try in the last two minutes to lose the sodding game. They had one job. One. Literally one job. Right. Honestly, I've always talked about how stupid the concept of breaking out like, your Cape Town for the rest of, of <laughs> South Africa. I'm willing to lose Natal. We can ship them off with the um, box and all. We'll cope. We'll manage. The whole I'm province done. being caught I'm in done. the crossfire. What did no, Peter Maritz do it's, to it's you? It's been one... I mean, no, but think about it. Think about it. They've had riots. They've had flooding. They've had weather. Now they've got a useless <laughs> rugby team. Like every single test match we have there finishes at four o'clock in the afternoon because of bad light. Every single test match is empty. And we always play Indian test matches that were effectively the away game there. Please tell me where good news comes from the top. I'm assuming. done. I'm bored of it. <laughs> you must come back here. You must come back to you must come back to the real parts of South Africa. You can go back to the cheetahs and come to the lions. We'll, oh, we'll, we'll take them. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I'm fuming. No, fuming. I reckon there's a part of them that is having. I mean, I don't know. If they definitely wouldn't have thrown the game. You know, I'm not making those accusations. But there's a part of them that I think is lacking because they were obviously far down the um, the log for most of. The season and decided to put all their eggs into the the challenge cup basket and there was a point where i think lions probably could have done the same right and they could have been like okay well let's been top eight we can we can let's try go for the challenge cup here and it's a risky move um because it's it's knockout rugby and anything can happen on one day and that that can be your season yeah. then thrown away but if sharks get it over the line get into the champions cup and Lions don't qualify, they are having a fat laugh at you, Oaks. We'd be one point, one point behind eighth. Yeah. If they so, and now we've got to, now we've got to beat Glasgow, who currently top the log, and then go and beat Stormers away just to have a chance. Yeah. And have a fuming, fuming. Fuming. Yeah. No, it's if you I mean as I say, you shouldn't have to want to rely on um, you know other people's fixtures, but I think we've we've come to as South African sports fans n- know what it's like to um, have to rely on other people's fixtures. I'm thinking of South Africa. I mean, the Sharks lost 12 games in the URC. Could they just win like one more? It's, I just needed one more out of them. I mean, four wins. It's actually an embarrassment to think that they might make Champions no, four Cup. Four wins is nuts. With twelve URC losses, four wins is nuts. Out of sixteen, um, negative fifty points points difference. Like with the amount of investment, it's, it's, still, it's, it's disgusting. It's I mean, yeah. really, um, should be allowed in the Champions Cup even though win the Champions fair, Cup. Actually, that could have been the uh, what would have been interesting if had Benetton won the Challenge Cup, they probably would have wouldn't have sent over as good of a team, but that would have been a, a like kind of a prequel to the, to the mm. final um, or what could have been. So maybe also fair, fair play to Benetton. You have to give them um, their kudos. They went over there no. and like essentially the season could have been done within the space of two games, having lost the semifinal. And then if they, I think they lost to the Sharks, it would have really kind of put that top eight race under jeopardy. But the, the, the thing is, the thing is, is that, you look at, and it's a race at the moment between Lions, Connacht, and Benetton, and Edinburgh for that last sort of spot. Ulster to a point, but Ulster's now, you know, five points clear. So mm-hmm. they're, they're pretty much fine. 
Benjamin, if Benjamin was sitting on 45 points, for example, they're playing Bulls this weekend in Loftus, don't really back, then Bulls can probably yeah. get the and job. Bulls, and Bulls were okay. Lions playing a, a potentially a home semi. Yeah. So now, once again, I've got to rely on the Bulls beating Benetton. And then I've got to rely on the Stormers going over and beating Connacht, which is not going to happen because the Stormers are going, I just know what they're going to do. They're going to go and be absolutely <laughs> dog on this weekend and lose to Connacht and then put together their best performance of the season, beat us in the final thing, will miss out on top five, eight by like two points, and then they're going to get drugged by like Munster like by 50 points in the quarterfinals, and that'll be their season. It's like it's a conspiracy. Every <laughs> single South African team are out to ensure that Lions can't have nice things. Whilst they then take the nice things we do have, like all our players. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's it's a it's a tough gig being a being a Lions fan right now. Especially, <laughs> it it feels like the cog started turning this season. And then when you leave, having gotten so close, listen, there's a possibility it's not dead in the water, Stevie. We the, the... yeah. Well, I'm going this weekend. I'm going to to Adels on Saturday, so it's my first first appearance since before wow. COVID. Um, so, so no, they bring out the big guns <laughs> yeah. this week, you know, so go, they, they, they contact me and they give said, each one of them they listen, a, a team talk about a not leaving the line. Yeah, no, they've had, they've had, they've had, they've had, they've had to, they've had to call in the big guns here. You know, they've, they've, you know, they phoned me cash for, in order phone me and said, listen, Steve, you know, we know how important this game is. You, we've, we've got to do it. And at the end of the day, you can be the difference between a win and a loss against Glasgow. So they've brought me in simply so that I can, I can go chat to Carl Stane and just, you know, one time in <laughs> before the, before the game. Finish their captain, and then the, then the lines are sorted. I'm there to clear clear yeah, exactly. out the route. Um, and to get through some of the the other fixtures um, or results rather that happened this last weekend, Stormers leaving it pretty late to get it done over the Drags. We did say that Drags have been actually playing a little bit more decently recently, and and they did put up a good fight. But Stormers getting that done and pretty much taking them out of any worry about um, sliding out of the top eight there. Um, I agree. I think this weekend versus Connacht, I think Connacht have something to play for. Stormers don't really. It's just about points. They're not going to get a home, home quarter um, at this point. So, yeah. I mean, the best they can do is kind of go for fifth. Um, and then some other notable results. Um, the... Scarlet's going down to Ulster again. Then Ulster guaranteeing pretty much their top eight. Munster with a big win, 47 points to 12 over Connacht, um, leaving Connacht in a similar position to you. Leinster with a massive win versus Osprey, 61 points to 14. Um, and then finally Edinburgh beating Zebra, 40 points to 14. Um, but as you said, these games, they, you know, you're just hoping for a little zebra upset there. Um, so, Stevie, going into this weekend, let's look at the the fixtures up ahead. And big, big one, um, as you mentioned, is um, the Lions versus um, Glasgow Warriors Saturday, three pm. Doesn't give more. Well, there's, there's there's lots of big ones in this top eight. I, I mean, I'm looking at Edinburgh. Edinburgh We've got Munster at home. And then they're going away to Benetton for their last yeah, one. That's actually so you know they're also sitting on 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 forty eight points. So it's they're catchable. Like it's, they're catchable. It's, they're, they're, no, they are catchable. No, no. The, the thing is, they could very well lose both these games. So the Lions will get a bonus point win this weekend. They could actually go ahead of Edinburgh if Munster mm. were to hammer them. And then if Lions were to take like two I, bonus points out of Stormers, no. then they could they could sneak past Edinburgh. Problem is, then Benetton's got to win. Yeah, uh, it's, I mean, when you, you start know, playing so, some some funky jigsaw puzzling um, you know, to get the, get the results yeah, going no, it's, away. It's going to be wild. Ulster Leinster will be big as well, um, but I think Leinster are going to play a probably pretty um, decent team there, or maybe not because of the Champions Cup final. I'm very Look, even even Ulster aren't aren't out of the out of the out of the contention yet because they've also got two tough games to finish. They've got Leinster and then they've got Munster. True that. So it's <laughs> that's what I'm saying, you know, and I, I look back at the Lions loss to Munster, which for me would hurt a lot. If because if we'd won that mm -hmm. game, we'd be sitting in such a good position. We'd be sitting on about forty, I think forty seven points if we'd won that game. Um behind Edinburgh, Benetton and Ulster, who arguably yeah. Two at least have a, a, probably a harder run in than, than the Lions. Although having said that Glasgow Warriors, I mean it's a massive team to 
to beat. But at, at, at home at Ellis, you got to back them. But you know what? We'll yeah. see. I back my boys. Um, then we've got Bulls Benetton as well, as mentioned earlier. Um, Bulls looking to get a um, – well, they'll get a home quarter, potentially a, um, could fight for a home semi, but – Bit of an outside chance there, but definitely we can get it done. Benetton, another must win um, for them to avoid the Lions um, on the prowl. Um, Sharks, Cardiff, pretty dead rubber. Um, neither of which have anything to play for. Ospreys, Drags, um, same story. Ospreys, after their massive statement win over the Stormers um, away from home, yeah. have actually... Um, been pretty shocking over the last couple of weeks. So, well, out of contention, um, yeah. They are they're well out of contention now, but uh, exciting, exciting. Uh, there are a, a multitude of possibilities with two weeks to go still um, of what could happen for the for the remainder. So, as fans, I mean, it's nice for me being a Stormers fan. I can I can rest a little easy, not worry too much. But I'm I'm in I'm somewhat. You lose this weekend, and I'm not doing the pod next week. We're, we're cancelling this. I'm going to have to find somebody else to do this. <laughs> well, week. next weekend is when you want us to really lose. This, this weekend, um, I mean, I, I can't promise both, but judging by Stormers is a way, a way form, I can't promise anything. Yeah, um, right. But, yeah, very exciting. I'm I'm very excited to watch how the Lions versus Glasgow Warriors go because that, that's essentially that. I think that's the biggest game of the weekend. Both teams are desperate to win. Yeah, look, I think it's it's about their making statement. If they go out and get a bonus point win and put themselves on forty nine points, then that's them saying we're not we're not dying wondering mm-hmm. here. You know, um, the annoying thing is Lions missed out on um, qualification last year by three points. Um, forty eight points with Sharks in in eighth position, um, and Lions won forty fifth, forty five. So you know, chance we we will finish with more points than last year. At this rate, we only need two more from the next two games. And that's the annoying thing is we could get two more wins and still not finish top eight, whereas 48 points last year would have guaranteed you mm. uh, top mm. eight. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the top 10 has been very competitive. They're all actually solid rugby teams and, and they're playing, you know, good rugby. And there's a bit of a drop off, I think, for the, you know, bottom few, particularly those well sides. Um, but it's, it's helped, I think, with the resurgence of Benetton bringing up the Italian um, side because they weren't kind of close to where they are now currently. They were really, really um, sort of foundations. But we'll have to see what happens this weekend. Um, and then before the final um, game week of the season. But let's get into the football, Stevie. Um, Arsenal were hoping that Tottenham could get it done last night. Um, versus, versus Never happening. Never I mean, happening. That Son miss, you know, that, that's going to sit with them, the the Arsenal fans. And it was quite funny looking at the fans' reaction. There's been a lot of talk about um, Big Ange and the reaction about you know people asking him, oh, "Are you going to throw the game?" But you could tell even in the start, the Tottenham stands that they weren't quite as up for it as if it were a typical game. Yeah. You know, they they were they were disappointed with like the son miss, but it wasn't it wasn't the type of atmosphere like they had a um had everything on the line. They had such an outside chance of making um, you know, top four. It could have been done and they mm. would have wanted to get the win. But um with that, I think it's like one of those now that they have lost, it is versus City. Like I think, to be honest, I think a lot of the fans are relieved. I don't know where, where do you sit in this conversation? You know, throwing it, not throwing a game, but you know, hoping your team doesn't get get the win, um, and then as a result, your your rivals can't get a league trophy. If you know, if you were sitting in the same position with Liverpool or or City, what would what would your um, instinct be? Well, I think for me, from a Spurs perspective, you've got, to even, you've got to try and block that out. The reality is that they were in the top four race until last night. You know, um, Villa dropping points meant that if, that's, if, that's, if Spurs had won last night, they would have been two points behind Villa. And likely, um, because they would have needed Villa to have lost this weekend, mathematically still in the top four race. Um, they they now can't. Uh, well, uh, no, they can't. I mean, they have to win by 
Like Villa, they, I think they have to win by like 10 goals this weekend. Villa will have yeah. to lose by like not a couple of goals for them to, to mathematically yeah. make it. So it's not happening. So that was their top, that was Champions League going. Uh, and I think that's what Ange, Big Ange was so pissed off about is that he said, you know, everyone's talking about the title race. He said, we've got Champions League on the line. You know, we've got Which is a, lot a lot of to money, play for here. By the way. Huge, yeah. Huge. And I, what, I, what I'm really enjoying about Big Ange is that he's so aware that, they are, that, that there's shit wrong with Spurs. You know, he's talked about, he said, there's a lot of, he said, there's, there's, there's factors yeah. inside, outside. He said, we've got very shaky foundations. He said, you know, he I think he's very aware that, the game. first of all, the squad's not good enough. Even, even Sorry? the word of fact, yeah. during no, the exactly. match, to say, you know, stop essentially chatting shit and getting us, trying to get us to lose this game because, like, who the hell do you think you are? You know, because then it's also, yeah. football fans are fickle. He, and then he loses this game and the next game and they're calling for his head. You know what I mean? So uh, for him, yeah. he's got to pr- he's got to protect himself, uh, and and I agree with what you're saying. You know, because there was a chance it would have maybe a di- been a different conversation had top four already been gone. Then you can like you know you can make your yeah. your point of view obvious by which team you select. You know, it, 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 yeah, and and also Europa is a is a league killer. You know, you don't want to be in the Europa League if, no. if you want to contend I mean, for the league. And if there's one thing that that that, that Spurs has shown is that Big Ange is there. He wants to win trophies. So look, I don't know if maybe next season they go and sit there and say, right, okay, well, we're in Europa. We can actually win this tournament. That could be yeah. our our uh, that that can be the monkey off the back. I mean, I think you know everybody has was quick to 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 slag him as soon as Spurs start, start, started playing badly. But I still think he's had a hell of a first he, season. If you look he, at you know, coping without Harry Kane, yeah. which is yeah. which is massive. I mean, you, know, you just lost your record they goal scorer. So much closer to Champions League than they did last season. Um, without yeah. someone who's so scored thirty, had, I mean, thirty something goals throughout the um, throughout the league. I mean, yesterday's yeah. So it's been a, it's been a huge season for Spurs, and I think he's pissed off because I think he knows that they've progressed and that top four would have made a bit more money. And he said he could really reinforce the squad and actually start turning them into. Look, league contenders, maybe not yet, but turn them into a team that stays within the top four and competes for that top four, not just sort of like an outside charm. I mean, the fact that, like, chances are, I don't, th- I don't think Villa make top four next season. You know, we don't really see it very often when the sort of teams who are usually outside the top four yeah. go to season. I mean, look at Newcastle. They had a bit of a drop off this season, and I expect Villa to do the same. So, you know, but I think Chelsea will be next, be- will yeah. be the next season. United can only be better next season. Yeah. So I think that's where he's pissed off. He's like, they lost a big opportunity, but to to make to try and keep that mm-hmm. distance between a United, a Spurs, and Newcastle. I think with Spurs also they they're not going to sign the marquee players that are worth, um, let's say eighty million plus because those types of players are like mm-hmm. you not wanting to go to Spurs and they'll go for Champions League football. But what they can do is they can with Champions League money they can sign a couple you know forty fifty million pound players. And mm-hmm. turn them; those can become the sons of this world. You know, the people that become really good players, and the, those investment opportunities. And they have actually been, um, you know, de- pretty decent in in the transfer market. You know, think of the addition of James Madison this season; he's been amazing. If he had been injured a bit mm-hmm. less, they probably would have been, had Champions League football at this stage. So, I think just having that cash to sign to continue to bolster their squad is what they need to be able to remain relevant i think there's still i wonder if there's a question mark there if they're gonna go after a striker it's like they kind of have brennan johnson but he's been playing mm-hmm. on the wing rich harlison's there but he's also been injured in and out of form um son is i think better on the wing than straight through the middle i mean he's been playing a lot through the middle this season so um there are areas i think i mean i look i get i guess it's a bit of a race for Ivan tony isn't it true you know, uh, and I think, and I think that Spurs were serious. I think they'd be going all out for him because um, they need. I, I think they have to get a striker. You know, yes, they've coped in a very commas with Kane, but if Harry Kane stayed, they would have made Champions League. Yeah, it's quite simple. You know, um, and and so they need yeah. to find that person. Um, and it's about depth as well. You know, as, as, as you mentioned, Madison getting injured all of a sudden. That's kind of their Champions League spots sort of gone. And the problem again, you know, an Aston Villa comes sixth, for example. Great season for them. Spurs go to Ollie Watkins and say, come play Champions League with us. You know, be our big striker, stuff like that. He maybe thinks about it. Now, Ollie Watkins... No one's leaving. Is, no is one's leaving Villa this season. Then that Villa, that Villa like no side, you can't, no you can't touch them. Last season. Why would you? Like, yeah. The, it's like, 
and and I'm glad, you know, especially for Villa, they they're one of the they're an amazing club within the Premier League. They were, you know, only a couple of seasons ago in the Championship, barely stayed up. That was that pretty much Jack Grealish keeping them up single handedly at that point. Yeah. You know, went through a bit of an early bounce with Steven Gerrard, then drop off, and then Uma, Una Emery has just done um, played absolute magic. And they, they've invested a lot of money, to be fair. You know, first season up mm. in the Made some um, very good signings, um, backed some, backed yeah, some of their and, big and players. Been, you know, I mean, McGinn, who was always a bit of a enigma in terms of well, how good is he actually? Yeah. Well, he is actually that good. To one you, know? Of, you know, the most integral players this season. But even Yuri Tielemans, you know, chipping away. Um, mm. You know, Musa Diaby, um, Leon Bailey, they're all contributing and have come into their own. And I think, you know, Emery has managed to really get the most of those players where when you saw the latter stage of Gerard, it's like he had very similar players. He just couldn't get the best out of them. So I'm, I'm really excited to yeah. see um, Villa in the Champions League. I just think it's it's awesome to watch, um, you know, these types of clubs um, do well. Um, mm. Stevie, on the other end, we've got... Um, look what looks like the beginning of the a mass exodus at United. Um, mm. You guys still have a chance of going, getting above Chelsea, and we'll probably figure out a lot of that um, from after well, this evening. Brighton um, are hosting Chelsea um, at um, away, or Chelsea will be away, and then Man United will be hosting um, Newcastle both this evening. Um, and then the final games of the game week, you are going to Brighton, um, and then and then yeah. Chelsea are hosting Bournemouth. So you know, no one, none of those teams, no one has anything to play for other than pride at this point. But we've just yeah. seen the announcement of Varane leaving, his um, contract expiring. Casemiro rumored to be going to Saudi. Juan Bissaka apparently leaving. Martial apparently leaving. There's still question marks over what happens with Sancho. Um, so is this the the big overhaul that you've been waiting for? And 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 who who are you looking at as a Man United fan? Um, you know, to to try and bolster the squad because there clearly are um, big holes there, and that for me the biggest one is the leadership holes. But who do you see if, yeah. if you could take a top three um, picks to to come in and to replace those those outgoing uh, members of the squad? Yeah, so I mean, we were talking about it yesterday. I've got a, I've got a group with my um, my brothers and my, and my dad and all United fans, and I mean, the exodus is going to be mental in terms of contracts. You know, ending, Varane's going, Martial's going, Johnny Evans is a one year contract, which we don't really want to renew. That was a a, a knees mm. must. Um, even like a Tom Heaton's going. Amrabat's on loan. Is he only so on loan? He leaves. I didn't know that. Um, I thought he was signed. Yeah. So he's on loan. Um, so uh, he hasn't really been. Look, I think he's had a tough time in terms of having to fill in for for yeah. very, all the various injuries. Thanks, but I think Senna he's back, going box to box. Um, yeah. yeah, you've then got Jaden Sancho. What happens with him? Donny van der Beek comes back, and I mean, there's not much much space for him in the squad, so he probably goes. Um, and then you've got players like, I think it's McTominay, Wan Bissaka, Maguire, Lindelof, and Eriksson all have one year left in their contract. So if you're going to cash in on any of them and you don't see them as the future, now is potentially the time. So I think we generally going to look at potentially eight, even nine exits of, of players who have been in around the first team in the last few years. And, so, and I mean, that's, a, a, that's a good, like, it's a good quarter yeah, of your so squad. I, I mean, what will be good is it'll, the the week to week, salary um you know will be looking a lot mm. healthier after getting rid of them but of all those names you mentioned i'm not seeing any of them maybe sancho but even so there's so much bargaining power against man united there because they know of the the chaos cause but there's no one selling for more than 40 million i don't think no, no one's going to yeah we, we won't get a lot of money in no you're not gonna get a lot of money in. obviously it's, it's sancho and greenwood you know, are the ones that we that are that are sellable. And again, whoever's going to buy um, them know the position you know, that they're in, and they know Man United are stuck between a rock and a hard yeah. place. And you know, they don't. Man United don't have the bargaining power with their two biggest potentially the two biggest chips. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, Katafe, for example, I think we'll want to keep Greenwood, but we're not going to get yeah. a lot of money out of him. Um, and I think Sancho will want to go back to Dortmund. I, I'm very interested to see what happens with with the Sancho ordeal. Obviously, it'll depend on what happens with Ten Hag. Um, 
you know, if he does leave, then maybe Sancho goes and says, well, maybe, you know, I need to actually prove a point. I think from him, his point of view, you know, I don't think people will rate him as highly as he probably should be unless he chooses to stay, fire start and try and prove he can do it in the, in the Premier League. Because, yes, he's an underperforming United, but Bruno Fernandes, for example, has been an underperforming United his entire career and is still, you know, stats-wise, one of the top midfielders in yeah. Europe. And, you know, Sancho wants to be that kind of player, then he needs to be able to do it um, in, in the Premier League. And because, yeah, I mean, just, you know, as an English player, that's 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 what people will judge you on. We've seen it like the marquee players, the Pogbas of this world, trying to, like, be, being the marquee signee of Man United this season. And this is the turnaround point. And then it just not quite mm-hmm. working out. You know, even Lukaku, you know, going, leaving, go, then going to Chelsea. I mean, it's either, he's either going to come back and fight. And to be honest, it seems like I don't know how that works. Someone's going to have to, whoever messages first, right? It's yeah. Jaden Sancho yeah. messaging first, you know, after a, a Dortmund Champions League win. I'm not sure. I don't know if he, he necessarily needs to make peace. I feel like they both are kind of stuck there. I, I don't know how it will resolve, but I can see Sancho going back to Dortmund for a couple seasons, you know, maybe trying to get a Bundesliga there, but he's still young. I think he will try and make his way then back into the Prem, much like Lukaku did, um, potentially mm-hmm. for another club, maybe a return to City, um, you know, his boyhood club. There, there are options for him. He's an English... You imagine, imagine the snake move of that. I mean, uh, going to United, having a bus up with the manager, refusing to apologize, being shipped off on loan, then coming back and say, "Fine, well then I'll go to just go well, back to I City." Mean, if he's playing, if he's playing all the football, you know what I mean. He's the only one laughing, right? If 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 things stay the way uh, where they are, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting transfer window um, for Man United. Whereas you know, you kind of look at Chelsea and you think, "Geez, they really had a horrible season," but. And they've had massive, massive transfer trans- windows. And I don't see a lot of. The, I don't see. I don't see. I don't see the, tra- the Chelsea yes, exit. But that's the thing, right? You know? It's like we knew it was going to be chaos. You can't just throw like 20, 23 year olds and expect some like you know some sort of um, consistency in it. Or you also you also can't just go and sign all these players, throw together the squad, and then appoint the manager. And say right, yeah. well here yeah. you go. So you know. And because now the man's going in and going, cool, that's great. This is yeah. not the kind of squad and I want, for example. Or maybe it's close to the squad yeah. I want, but I've got far too many of this player. I've got to need more yeah. of this type and of player and stuff. Conor Gallagher and Cole Palmer, Pochettino would have been out of a job by now. There's just no way he would have gotten through the season. Yeah. But he's found those two, I think, as his, um, you know, essentially one's holding down and then the other one is um, scoring goals on top of the pitch. Um, so I think if they can make... I don't know if they'll, they'll go for signings, but there's some sort of um, change that's happening there for the better, and they're finding a bit of consistency. Yeah. They still have those blowout losses, um, you know, that are, are obvious and, and a little bit scary. They're not nearly in a place, I don't think, to challenge for the league, but you can start seeing the framework of what a Chelsea could look like. I mean, even just Reese James coming back, getting an assist this weekend, he's class. If he can just stay fit, I mean, I really I do feel for him. Yeah, where's it's Fofana? Fana. Didn't yeah. play the entire season. You know, they 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 Ben Chilwell yeah. also had his injury issues. They they've been a bit they've been a bit, a bit like United, I suppose. You know, where they have had injuries to such important players consistently yeah. throughout the season. Um, and, and and as much as it sounds arbitrary, you look at title winning teams, and I always use Liverpool as the as as the big example. I mean, when you won that title, the the, the, the some of the players that stayed fit yeah. for you throughout the entire season. So you can huge. name that team, you know, like and and you can name the the usual Liverpool team, and eighty percent of games had the same players in them. Yeah, you know, had the City are the only the anomaly. Game. If you look at Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal statistically have used the least amount of players this season. Yeah. They've yeah. had the most consistent level the entire that, season. No. And that's what has to happen yeah. if you want to compete against City. City are the only squad that have the genuine, you know, 24, 27 players yeah. that are interchangeable and can keep the standard. Everybody else has to have that miracle run, that miracle type season. And even then, as we're seeing, yeah. it's not enough. I mean, you know, 
Julian Alvarez, who had the most decorated um, season ever in professional football last season, treble and World Cup mm. winner, is barely playing 50% of games. You know what I mean? That tells you everything you need. Now, Kevin De Bruyne, who's been one of the best players in the Premier League for the last four or five years, missed half the season. Yeah, fine. Yeah. And they coped. And Phil Foden just went, oh, cool, I'll just <laughs> yeah, be the best player this exactly. season then. Thanks. Um, no, it's hard to compete. But just a quick look at the Premier League table. It's confirmed Sheffield and Burnley have gone down. Um, I do hope Burnley um, keep hold of Vincent Company. I'd like to see him get another crap. It's just, it's a very young team. <laughs> Pardon I, th- I think Vincent had the same issue that Daniel mm. Farker had, where you, you have to play football to yeah. stay up. It's admirable trying to come yeah. up and say, no, we're going to be positive. We're going to play nice football. You will get relegated. You are not good enough yet. You have to have a consoli- consolidation season where you bring yeah. your same squad up, you make a few additions, you don't overhaul the squad, and you keep yeah. it tight. Sean Dyche. One baby. ones. Sean you know, Dyche. Nil nils. Yeah, you got to, you know, and 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 Eddie Howe had similar things when he was in, on the Bournemouth run. You know, he came up and and stayed in, and then you have your big season, your seventh place finish, your eighth place finish, for example. But the problem is, once again, then you got to respect the league and say, cool, well, we can't all of a sudden just continue yeah. trying to become this amazing player. You've got to keep it solid. You've got, you cannot stay up with you know f- what five yeah. wins and like n- but, nine draws you know 23 losses you can't you've got to have yeah. more draws the, the integrity of the premier league is kind of coming into question stevie i mean you're looking at city about to get their fourth title on the bounce you yeah, first are ever. looking at three teams who came up from the championship all going straight back down it's giving me super league vibes mm-hmm. you know and well i'm all in for the super <laughs> league now these days yeah. um, your, only, your only confirmed qualification but I mean, Good. City yeah. have always been. I think bar two of their titles have been able to walk in the the league, and the one was when United came second, and the other one was kind of last season. But that was only really the last eight game weeks. Otherwise, it has been very close, um, largely. Mm. And coming down, you know, I think this will be their third one that's coming down to the final day, which means they have been pushed. And this is where it's just like for me, it's like how do they fucking get it done every time? Every, every time. time, it's just. Yeah, I know. It kills me. It kills me inside. And now the Premier League's cuck. We are turning into the Italian League. It's just like when, or, you know, when it's just like one team dominance. We need to knock them off their perch. And they need to actually just get relegated. Where are those um, charges against them? Those charges? I was about to say, because for all we say that it's becoming the Super League, where, where are the charges, charges at? You know, I'm putting, uh, until until it's that's resolved, wide. every one of those leagues for me has a little asterisk next to it. Yeah. Every one yeah. of them. No, take them all away. Take them absolutely all away. Because uh, then we get one. <laughs> no way. That would be unbelievable. <laughs> Who, what, Could you I imagine? Jose. The, the cross no, would be like... Jose. Jose Mourinho. It was Jose, Another dude. Team. Jose the That's GOAT, dude. Comes back for a, t- for a no, title celebration. A City have been dominant. Imagine Pogba, who currently can't play football because he's banned, just comes back, lifting the Premier League. <laughs> yes, boys. Um, but yeah, fi- final game week this season. Um Jurgen Klopp's swan song at home um, versus Wolves. That'll be a good one to watch. Apparently, man pulled his hamstring um, against um, Villa, so maybe man will be donning some some red crutches um, for his final one. I'm sure that it won't stop him celebrating um, and having a good time. And um, otherwise, it's just Arsenal hosting Everton. With their, it's a, obviously a must win for them, being. Um, now two points behind Man City. This would take them to 89 points with the win. And City are hosting... Um, who is City hosting? West Ham. West Ham. City are hosting West Ham. <laughs> they have um, Moises swan song. And Moises swan song. I mean, I think it will be quite funny mm. if both teams lose because uh, I think they will be hilarious. Yeah, I'm in for it. To, what time are these games? You know, are they four, five four, o'clock? Four my four. side, five your side. Yeah. Um, but, oh, is it? Oh, is that your time? Oh, okay, great. Because I'm looking at four o'clock. Because I've got. How's this, by the way? Just on a side note, for for for, for playing in, in, in an unorganized cricket league, the T20 tournament I'm currently in has three games a day: nine o'clock, half past eleven, half past two. We're playing at the nine o'clock game, and then the half past two game at a venue that's about an hour away. So now I must drive an hour, play a game. 
<laughs> piss about for three hours, try to play another game. Get on your phone, and then bro. Let's stretch it out, Stevie. Get ready for the second one, bro. Dude, it's not just about getting on the beers right, earlier. No, we're old, dude. The 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 phone the phone <laughs> is not enough these days, dude. I'm gonna have to take a physio with me, a nice bath, like forty five anti inflammatory. Like, oh. No, just let me play two games in a row, come back and watch football. I'm not no, asking much. No, that, that, uh, that is tough. Um, unfortunately, the Premier League didn't consult you on on that one. But <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> Let's move into the cricket, and we are really almost. Um, nearing in on the final yeah finally, finally. <laughs> what are we going to do in two weeks time when there's no premier league there's no cricket the champions yeah, we'll, league will have wrapped up i think the us uh, the champions and yeah, challenge we'll, cup wrapped up we're going to be sitting there talking yeah, we're about be empty we're going to be absolutely what, empty yeah i think even the golf majors will almost be flipping done we're gonna have we're gonna have nothing to chat we're gonna have to go to horse <laughs> racing maybe some like greyhound racing yeah, listen, maybe, maybe some new avenues there um but yeah. it's essentially the figure is we've got KKR on top, Rajasthan Royals in second. They have both secured their places um, in the knockouts, and it looks like KKR will um, guarantee themselves a um, top spot. Right. Um, and that's which will then see um, two and three go ahead. No, two and three play each other. There's a confusing thing. One, One versus, versus two. two. Okay, our loser. loser then plays the winner of yes. three versus four. So if the, yeah. and then on the on the opposite end of the scale we have Punjab Kings, Mumbai Indians and Gujarat Titans are officially out. Then we have the good news is though that means that Miller can come back. KG can come back. I actually almost won Sunrise is not to qualify. To so Aiden and Heinrich Well this is the thing. That's what I'm saying. So what we actually need is we need RCB to 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 pull something out of the asses and qualify, along with like and can, can we, can DC can because I'm not worried about Stubbs. Stubbs Stubbs can come whenever he he'll be he'll be fine. Although yeah, and Nokia, mm, I wouldn't mind seeing Nokia play. We want KKR CSK Sunrisers. No, we want KKR CSK RCB, and then probably LSG to be fair because that's mm. just Quinton. Mm. But so just to give everyone a bit of context into what can happen because now essentially we've got um, Delhi Capitals and RCB um, on the outside looking in. They are on DC on 14 points, um, RCB on 12 um, and SRH and CSK are also on 14 points but with a better net run rate than DC. So essentially Sunrisers have two more games to play they need to lose those both considerably for DC to have a chance. CSK, they're the same. They even higher um, net run rate. They need to lose significantly and RCB need to win well for them to have a chance. Um, so it's very unlikely for DC. But, I mean, can we quickly just give RCB their kudos for the comeback that has been the second half of the season? Yeah. I mean, they were like... I mean, I think they lost about six games in a yeah. row or something and now stupid. I think they're six on the bounce. It's been ridiculous. So It's, it's um, mental. Fair play to them because we, we did write them off um, pretty early. But it would be pretty nuts if they managed to sneak in. I mean, this, Virat has been um, top run scorer the whole, pretty much the whole, entire tournament. And he remains there. <laughs> But what I what I, will, what I will say is I've seen a shift from him in the last few weeks. He's said he he's suddenly realised that you know the, that sort of one forty, one thirty, even one fifty strike rates. I mean he's he's average now one fifty strike rate, but he was at one stage a bit lower mm-hmm. to the one twenty, one thirties. And I think he's the last few weeks it's he's taken up. he's tipped yeah. up a gear, and he's looking for that 160, 170 strike rate. You know if and not still, if not two hundred. So it's been a nice yeah, nice shift from him. Averaging at sixty six. I mean ridiculous um, stats. Just crazy if he had a bit more of a team around him as we've said for so many years with rcb um they would have had at least one title and, and can we talk about the fact that faf has just quietly become the second highest South african yeah. scorer gone about his business just but that's it just chipping away at 40s right lots of lots of 40s and, yeah. and uh, valuable knock well he's averaging 28 so you know it's the 30s really but he's it's 30 at 170 yeah. strike rate so it's not it's not good enough for him for his standards but if you are walking in there as an opener, giving you 30 off, you know, 10 or, I mean, what, or 12 or whatever, uh, you know, then then fine. Yeah. You know, do it. 100%. So RCB with an outside chance, um, 
but it does look like the top four as it stands, KKR, Rodson Royal, CSK and Sunrise is hard or bad. Um, they're in the driving seats. They, um, CSK and, and Sunrise just need to win one game and they are secured um, the top four qualification into um, the knockout stages, um, which um, we will know by the end of the weekend. So exciting stuff. We'll see what happens with these South African players and whether they go back to... Um, the national squad, do they join up um, with the squad that's gone to West mm. Indies? Do certain people fall out of that West Indies squad now? You know, potentially debutants who have just been called up. That is quite hard to imagine. Um, and, you know, it'll be interesting to see how um, Rob Walters goes about um, managing um, expectations of, of player time and stuff like that. How many T20s are we playing versus West Indies? I think three. I, mean, that's, that's, um, I want to say we're actually playing. We're, we're actually playing today. Um, it's a internal game versus the emerging yeah. eleven. It actually oh, starts now. Um, I half thought about actually going and, and having a watch. It's all the emerging um, eleven down the road Mutashami, there, Victoria. Um, age thirty and the emerging eleven. I mean, uh, Michael Hussey, yeah. I think, only made his debut at twenty nine, and I mean, he went on to have a. Few yeah. Well, I never forget George Linder when he made his debut, and they said, "You're a nice young bowler, yeah. um, lots of years ahead of him." I was like, "Guys, he's twenty. George Linder. I was like, "Guys, he's twenty nine. He's, he's been on the block here for a while." Yeah, cricketers. They, I think they are actually starting to peak a little bit later, though. To be fair, no, they are. They are. There's no doubt. But I still wouldn't call twenty nine young. No. I mean, you know, I, I'm happy to call. I'm happy to call twenty five young. You know, yes, TV, uh, and, let, let's and be careful with our age because we're creeping up now. Are we not young? Well, that, uh, you know what? <laughs> young, hey? That's a, it's a young, it's, it's a young, it's a young time to be making your emerging way in the, in the cricket sphere. Well, yeah, no, put me, put, as I said, put me in the academy, you know, as, as next to Quinn. Yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah, exactly. Like Quinn's looking at me like, dude, you've been shaving for like 15 years. But hey, dude, leave me. <laughs> yeah, buddy, you can start, start seeing some silver fox energy um, from, from the man. Um, I mean, he's literally ten years younger than me and playing for the IPL. That, I mean, and it's not like it's not like I'd be old to be playing in the IPL. I actually yeah, have. And then you compare that to like Faf, who's it's like you know Faf was Faf ten years older than me. Was playing for the protest when <laughs> yeah. was probably born, not quite, but you know, almost. Yeah. Um, Stevie, let's get into the predictions for this weekend. We are going to go with. We, we have do. to. We do because the momentum yeah. is monumental. Um, at the moment for me and these predictions and I'm feeling hot. We are going to go with the two big Premier League games of the weekend, City versus West Ham, Arsenal versus Everton and then um, the one URC game and the big one for you, um, the emotional... The, emotional the, the huge one, the huge like one. Cool. In fact, it should actually be Stevie P versus Glasgow because that's effectively what yeah. it is this Stevie weekend. P and the boys versus Glasgow. So that's Lions um, hosting the Glasgow Warriors. Um, in the URC. So, Stevie, let's get the um, the Lions one out the way for you because I'm sure you've got, um, you know, you've got something on your on your chest there. Uh, have you got a prediction in mind? I do. Okay, as do I. Um, I'll count us in, and we're going team by points. Um, three, two, one. Lions by four. Lions by five. Ooh. Ooh. Very similar. Ooh. Very Ooh. similar. Ooh. Ooh. Dirty. It would have been funny if I was on the other side of that. Um, okay. So yeah. I do think it's going to be, I do think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a high scoring game. I think it's going to yeah. be one of those just trading yeah. blows. Similar to, like, similar to the Bulls one. That's yeah, getting another yeah. losing no, I expect, I expect, I expect 70, I expect 70 plus. I, I feel like I'm definitely putting money on like plus 50 points this yeah. weekend because I genuinely think it could be a even, bit of a, even Glasgow, even Glasgow, um, getting two points versus the Bulls, not a bad result for them this last weekend, by the way. Well, it's, it's, yeah. it's kept them on top. Um, so it's, it's given it's them something to fight for. At the end of the day, yeah. they win all their games, they, they will remain on top. Um, so yeah, I mean they they've got a very good chance of, of finishing top of the league, but you know it's going to be a big shift for them having to play their best teams, mm-hmm. traveling, going back. The nice thing is they do have the Challenge Cup break. This is the nice thing about a lot of those teams, yeah. um, with and the exception of a Leinster. Uh, everyone in that top eight have got an opportunity mm-hmm. to just have a week and off. After after this week, they'll be heading home. 
and if they get number one spot, mm. it's home for the for the rest of the for the rest of the year for them. You know, they don't have to leave. Yeah. Um. So that that that's like one you know big final push. Yeah. At, at a push, for example, if they if push really comes to shove, they might have to travel to yeah. Ireland for a final. Definitely. Yeah, which is not exactly a massive shift. Uh, not, not, not if Lions just qualify and then all of a sudden get their no with Lions, they wouldn't be hosting the Lions. No, well, I was saying on Twitter yesterday, I'm trying to decide if I want to go watch Lions versus Leinster in the quarters or Lions versus Manchester in the final. You know, Daniel, I'll meet you in Ireland. Come over, bro. Come over. We'll go together. Um, let's get there into the second and third. Let's start with uh, City versus West, West Ham. Um, you have a score in mind, Stevie? I do yeah, indeed. Me too. Um, we're going to go score and team. Um, I will count us in three, two, one, four, nil city, three, one city. Yeah, dude. Four, 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 no, four boys got to get a goal, dude. No, got to get a goal. They're walking it in, bro. They're walking it in. They you are reckon? The, it's going to be a lot of sky blue in Manchester this weekend. Um, sorry, Arsenal fans. Sorry, United fans. Sorry, Liverpool fans. Yeah, see, I don't know. I thought that City were a bit average last night. They so were, but, but if, that, if they that, were that packed last night, that means they, if they slip up, I will be furious, actually. Because if they, because <laughs> if they haven't slipped up in the two last days that Liverpool have been involved, when it's been in the 90 points, but now you choose to slip up, now... Now you're taking the Listen, piss. I've got no sympathy for you because I had to. I I lost to the Aguero goal. Okay, so don't come no. with your things. I lost to QPR bottling how, a. How a many points were you goal. on? Eighty-one, something like that. I don't care, dude. Back in the Premier League was yeah, hard. Back in the Premier League, had two foot two <laughs> footed tackles on the regular. Um, yeah, dude. Not 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 <laughs> the sticky tackle shit that we play now. Yeah. So unfortunately for Moisey, no, not getting not getting any. Any sort of purchase there. I mean, a goal would be would light it up. But I want an early goal from West Ham, and I want an early goal from Everton, and yeah. I just want to see yeah, the yeah. Twitter like, going crazy and have a mouth uh, I just want to sit there phoning an Arsenal man, going ooh 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 ooh, and yeah. then laughing at him. No, it's stressful. It's stressful. Um, but we love it. This is what keeps us alive. Um, the last game, um, Arsenal versus Everton. Arsenal hosting. Um, Steve Dyson, the boys, they've gone on an, on an insane run. Um, they've had the best run um, on par, only or only better than bettered by by um, Man City, essentially just because they've drawn one, they've mm. won their last. Otherwise, they've won all the all of their last five. Um, so they'll be looking to finish the strong. They're not in a relegation battle. And kudos to Sean Dyche, by the way. What? Huge, Dude, this, I mean, this huge. is one of the most ridiculous efforts Forest. I think we've ever, and, ever seen. And Nuno for coming into an, a struggling Forest team, dragging them up. They've, they've been, I, I really enjoyed Forest over the last two seasons because they just, and, and their fans have carried them as well. At home, they're difficult to beat. They're, there's a lot of exciting yeah. players at Forest, and, and I kind of hope that they're able to keep Morgan Gibbs White, Callum Hudson Adoy. They're starting to gel, you know. If they can, yeah. I think it's just a bit of a bolstering in the midfield. But the fact that the two teams with um, big points deductions, I think it's eight and twelve between them, mm. managed to stay up is incredible. Um, so fair play to them both. I do think the three teams that came up. Were, I mean, the, the fact that Everton actually will end up nowhere near the relegation. Yeah, they, so, they, you know, I mean, at this stage they're fourteen yeah. points ahead. But that's this it's last mental. run, right? They've just much time. They were like, yeah. cool. No, we. have putting the hammer down here and they haven't been blowout wins, you know, one nils, two ones, but also you got to give, I think massive kudos to Pickford. He's had a very, very good season. I mean, the sticks. Um, yeah. Just, just that, that, that classic, we're going into the Euros. Yeah, who's going to be our keeper? Just reminding yeah. everybody, chill, chill. Still got yeah. number one locked down here. hundred um, percent. So yeah, that'll be the final one. Let's go um, with the Arsenal Everton. Arsenal obviously have to get the win if they want to win the Premier League. Stevie, what do you have a score in mind? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'll count us in. Three, two, one. Three, no. Oh, Three, no, Arsenal. Okay. Yeah, and I'm budging not, Bulls last budging. week, so okay. it's a bad I'll boy. Go, I'm I'll not go, budging this time. I'll go, um, <laughs> I'll go two, no. I'll go three, one. Everton, eh? But Arsenal 
uh, loving clean sheets. Um, they were very good. Yeah, and Everton just, just I don't think Everton will get to the <laughs> continent this weekend. It's a trip to London, bro. <laughs> it's just a trip to London. No, no, yeah, no. They, 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 they're all pulling through on Friday. They're having a two-day bender, and then they're rocking up on Sunday yeah, going, I yeah. saw, I saw a, an unbelievable clip, and it was out of the Fulham training camp. And it's like all these Arsenal fans like hoping that Fulham, you know, leave it all on the line this last weekend and try try beat City. And there all the Fulham boys are at training flying kites. <laughs> Just like <laughs> these oaks have signed off, bro. They are so done. Good, yeah. I mean, but they all have. I mean, your Crystal Palaces, your yeah, Brighton, your vibe. Bournemouth. It's just, I mean, just like um yeah. it's actually a little bit disappointing. I, I mean, we do have a title decider um coming down to the last day, but what looked like it was going to be a top four title decider and relegation battle that was going to be nice and relegation. Yeah, I mean, remember, remember, remember when the, I mean, those those ones where it was like top four wasn't settled, well, the title the wasn't settled, relegation it wasn't like settled, it was and you're watching we were like three way yeah, and you're just just sitting there like, oh shit, this guy scored a goal, which means that Imagine they're into the top the four, they're suddenly not winning the Liverpool league. Football. That would yeah. be nuts because that's when it's the 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 numbers start turning. As we said, Zach Galifianakis, shout out um, between two ferns. Um, it's the numbers, you know, the numbers start crunching. Yeah. The, the numbers there. Yeah. And, and then like, there's that then an incident. So one of the games starts 10 minutes later, yeah. all of a sudden it's like there's games are finished, but the yeah. one's still going on. Aguero. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't, 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 don't. I remember watching that. I was in my grandparents' oh. lounge. Oh, no, was everyone remembers that. where they and were. Um, Correct. Correct. I can't even tell you where I can't even tell you where I was when we, when United won most yeah, of our leagues, but I can tell you where we lost them. Trauma. It'll do, do yeah. it to you. Stevie, thank you very much. Um great show. Crunch time in all of the sports. We love it. Um we're lapping it up because in a month's time it might be a bit dry. We'll have some Euros build up. Yeah, I, mean, I suppose this is your this is your last game of the season for, for is, Liverpool. It hey? is sign off Jurgen Klopp, my guy. What a legend. I mean, I was in matric when he signed. That was a bloody long time ago, I'll tell you. Um, so, yeah, what a beast. Absolutely love him. Um, and you've asked more. Underperformed. Hey, 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 relax. <laughs> it's not to start this now. We'll extend the podcast by 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As we're signing yeah, off. Oh, by the way, underperformed. So rogue by dropping in that bombshell. Um, Stevie, well, on that note, I hope you have a gut week. Um, but the rest of the listeners, I hope yeah, you have dude, a phenomenal week. Fun. Going straight to Ellis Park to have some beers and watch Q and Horn <laughs> score hand. And the no one glad to go to absolutely dominate. Wow. You, you. Yeah, well, I was, I was going to say, come on, come on, Connor, but I need you to do us a favor. I just know <laughs> yeah, you won't. Stillness. Yeah, big weekend of big, big weekend <laughs> of um, sports and voting um, this weekend for me as well. I don't know if it when. You, I was about uh, to say, I'm, I'm not voting. voting this weekend. Um, we got the poll, so I'll be, I'll be in the queues. Um, but yeah, I was okay. in two weeks. It's actually two weeks today, I think. Okay. Well, alas, we don't need to get into that breakdown. Yeah. I don't think that's our area of forte. Yeah, that, that's a whole nother hour. Um, Stevie, thank you very much. All the listeners, please like, subscribe, share with your granny. She needs to hear this. She needs to know about the title race. She needs to know she about does. the UFC top she eight does. battle. She needs to know about Tristan Stubbs tearing up the IPL. Don't do not do it for us. Do it for her. But Stevie, thank you very much. Mm. Um, we'll channel in this time next week. 